Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's Espresso on S3. Yes, it's time for us to chat all things legal because the longer we spend times in our homes, and I think a lot of people during lockdown realize that, the greater the, the desire and the need is to renovate or upgrade your property. Now, it's definitely more cost effective to take on these renovations yourselves, but there are also a number of steps that needs to be taken into consideration before making any major renovations to your or changes to your property. Yep, and we are calling upon once again the legal guidance of our friend and expert in law, director of legalese.co.za, Eitan Stern, to answer the question, I want to do renovations on my private property, so now what? <laughs> Wait, someone might be stealing your car. I don't know. Yeah, if okay, no. if that is my car. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, Eitan, great to have you back, buddy. Um, we've cool. had some pretty heavy topics, so I, yes. I don't want to say this is this is a lighter topic because things can get squirrely when you start messing with the legalities of your own home. Totally. It's a, it's a look. I don't know if it's light or heavy, but it's quite an important topic, and it's really interesting to. To know what goes on. To delve on a little this. deeper, yeah. It is interesting because this is something mm. I'm about to embark on, and sometimes you don't know the legalities around it. Like, totally. what must I get permission for? So, totally. let's start off with, you know, before even mm. renovating, how important is it to get an evaluation mm. or evaluator to come and value your property? Cool. So, entering the great world of uh, home owning, um, all properties have different valuations. And it's important to get a valuation before you start doing any work because different areas are going to have different values that your house in different, whether your house, whatever area your house is in, it's going to have a different area. And what you don't want to do is overcapitalize. So put too much money into and a house. And then never be able to sell it. never going yeah. to be able to recover. So, you know, like with everything, any investment, it's really always important to understand what you're putting in, what you can get out afterwards. I consistently got a G for woodwork, okay. okay, because of my drawing skills when it came to, <laughs> to plans. So I'm not about to go and draw up any architectural plans, but it sure. is advised that if you are going to make those kind of structural changes, mm. that you do get an architect. Do you have to? And what areas of the house, what parts of the structure require an architect to be involved? Okay, so when you, you know, because houses are going to be sold one day or flats are going to be sold, you have to kind of guarantee to the next person that it's not going to fall down. <laughs> so if you're going to be making any... So, so South Africa's got lots of laws around building. We've got our building laws and regulations which govern how you, what you can do and how you can do it. So if you're going to be doing structural changes, moving walls, building on additions to the house, adding roofs, you need to be and you need that to be signed off by a registered architect or an engineer or someone that says, listen, we approve that this building isn't going to uh, collapse. So that's definitely regulated. And that's mistakes people often make. So they'll just go ahead and add something onto the house without getting it signed off. That potentially could be a hornet's nest when you, you're selling it on, yeah. Could, it could collapse or yeah. it could be a hornet's nest when, when you're selling it on for sure. Oh my gosh. Okay. This sounds scary and yeah. intimidating. <laughs> Are you changing your mind about any of the, the changes you're wanting to make? Yeah. Innovations. I'm not planning on knocking down walls. But I wanted to know from you, Eitan, I know that there are quite a few, as you mentioned, a lot of laws mm. and bylaws and especially with the municipal, they've also got bylaws when it comes to the renovations. Sure. What are the ramifications if you don't have the right permits? Mm. What happens if you've just decided to not go the proper yeah. route and do these renovations? Cool. So, well, as Graham says, one of the big issues is that you might have trouble selling the house later because someone won't want to buy the problems that you've created. Okay. So you're creating, you might make uh, save a few bucks for yourself now, but you're going to... Yeah, lose, lose a few out bucks on a, later. On a There's sale, also penalties yeah. that you can get. So if you've built without the right permissions, you can get penalties. The penalties can go from you know minor penalties to quite extreme, even to the case of the municipality bashing down a house that you've built if you haven't bought a built according to the regulations wow. and charging you for that expense. And at your cost, yeah. And Oof. so that and that's at your cost. And then I've heard, don't know if it's happened yet, but I've heard that the that the deeds office often uh, that they at, at some point might not do transfers if you don't have up-to-date plans. Hmm. So you could actually prevent yourself from being able to, to sell in the future. So, you know, it is really important that, uh, that, you, that you get the right permissions and approvals in order to build. Yeah, or go study architecture. 
<laughs> that could be the, the way to go. <clears throat> um, we're going to get into some of the structures that don't require all of the planning, but we are exploring the ins and outs legally of doing structural changes. A lot of people having spent the last 18 months staring at their four walls, possibly want to break down a wall, build a fifth wall, maybe make those changes to enhance the value ultimately of their property, but you've got to do it in the right way, and Eitan's going to show us how. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Yes, the epic music and intro and hair means one thing. We are getting into legal matters with our friend in legalities, Mr. Eitan Stern, continuing our discussion around our houses and making those little adjustments if we are doing renovations on private property. I A little bit earlier, we, we heard about those areas that you have to obviously yeah. have the, the right kind of person, you know, whether it's an engineer or architect, doing the plans so that you've got that officially done. What are the areas of the house that you can work on that don't require that? Okay. So the regulations call them minor, um, minor amendments or mi minor work. Essentially, and that's going to be things like moving appliances, um, moving non-structural walls. So an interior wall in the house, which doesn't isn't load bearing. Load bearing, bearing. Mm. okay. You can move that. Um, you can create a bry area, which doesn't have a chimney. You can create a, a garden shed, which is less than three square meters. So there's minor work in the house that you can do, which you don't need uh, architectural approval or, or plans approved for. But if you ever are uncertain, you can always check, and that's it's that's that's kind of the point. It's really important to know: is this minor work, or do you need plans approved for this? Do you know where the right place mm. is to check? Like, if if you can they you just, just Google, you? so like... you probably can. I mean, you probably you probably <laughs> can just Google it. There's probably lots and lots of content. That would definitely be my first step. You could check with the city where you know when we ever have a question as lawyers that we want confirmed by a regulator, we give them a call. There's the National Home Builders Association. There's the there's different associations you can phone and ask. You can also call an architect or an engineer and ask them. So it would kind of be about finding someone in the industry or, or speaking to the city. Yeah, and I know it's so. worth it in Cape Town where so many areas are like heritage sites and so there's certain yeah. restrictions mm. in yeah. certain areas. you just got to be very careful. You yeah. have to be careful. Now, Eitan, what do you do in the event that, you mm. know, you are a homeowner and your neighbours are about to do some renovations? What what rights do you have to, to you know, find out how is the noise level going to affect you or yeah. the sure. dirt or the value of your property or the area? Do you have much right on someone else's project? Can they block your seat? view with a second story <laughs> so it's a great question I mean we all live in a city together so you know what do you do in your house affects me as my as your neighbor and uh, and vice versa so you know and that's kind of the job of the municipality the municipality is supposed to kind of oversee this thing as a whole and before that they approve anyone's plans they need to look at a number of factors Heritage is one, and neighbours would be another. So they need to decide whether it's going to affect the neighbour's view. or Because that could knock the value of your property down drastically if your sea view is gone. 100%. Yeah? So, so, so the municipality is supposed to decide. But So you, if, you, if the municipality gives permission and you object, you can apply to the municipality and you can put your case forward and they have to consider the case and then you know, and they'll make a decision based on that. If the municipality still doesn't decide in your favour and you feel like that's unfair, you can put an application in what we call PIA, the Promotion of Access to Information Act, and you can find reasons for why they didn't approve that. So, you know, the Sea View is a you know is a yeah. good example. If someone puts a is wants to put a three story house in front of your Sea View, that's they're not allowed to do that. And if the municipality gives them permission, you're going to have the right to ask why they gave permission, and then uncover whatever. And if, and if all of that so, doesn't work. They come to you. Yeah, <laughs> that's the work. They come to someone like that. So definitely, I mean, considering your neighbours is important. One, we were talk, just talking about a minute ago during lockdown. You, everyone's working from home, and now you've got neighbours building yeah. next door. Yeah. So you know, so we as we, well, it's kind of a two-edged thing. So you have to be fair in that you want pe people are allowed to build in their homes, but they have to keep to the laws, and they're doing that. They can only build what they're allowed to build, and they can only build during the certain hours of the day 
when they're permitted to do it and according to certain... certain no, no, the, the fact uh, that you've just had a baby <laughs> just doesn't really matter to some people. Um, let's get into the worst case sure. scenario. And I've, I've, I can speak from experience there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I love the fact we, we are neighbours by that very term. You've got yeah. to learn to coexist together, especially if you're going into a long-term kind of deal there. What happens if it all goes wrong and yes. you're not at fault? Yeah, you got your plans done, everything's great, and the contractors do something that isn't to spec. Totally. Can you go after them? Are you at fault? Where does the liability lie? Totally. In that so case? this is a really interesting area and something which, uh, which I suppose a lot of people don't know, know about is that if you want to be a builder, and this is for major innovation, so we're not talking about the minor work. If you want to be a builder and do major, major jobs, you need to be registered with the National um, Builders, so uh, Building Council, the National Registry of Building Councils. I forget the acronym. There we go. There we go. Okay, one <laughs> well, of those. That's the architectural <laughs> one. Anyway, you need to be registered and um, you're going to have a registration number and you're going to be certified by them to, you know, to be able to do the work. Um, it's really worth investigating to ensure that your builder does belong to this organization because if something does go wrong, the organization then has insurance that they can cover and there's recourse and there's procedures. Whereas if you're not using a builder that's registered, um, your recourse is much is, 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 is limited. So it's really important for homeowners doing renovations to ensure that they're using a registered builder. It's really important for builders to make sure that they're registered and playing as part of that system. Okay, so if they're not registered, ultimately the fault is yours for not checking it totally. out. Yeah. So very important to check. So don't trust your auntie's neighbor's cousin's friend. And please just ask just, if, just, just if, check if they are registered. And if your neighbor has just come home with a brand new baby, just ask them what times would work. <laughs> okay. What times not Just be neighborly in that case. I think the most important thing here is that just... One, that one's hurt you. That yeah, no, that could be a deep trick. That could be real deep. Um, I'm still tired, in fact. I'm still tired. <laughs> but, um, I think the important thing here is be a neighbor. You know, if you're going to do these things, be a neighbor on both sides. Give a little if someone is wanting to renovate their space. And if you're wanting to do that, make sure that your neighbors are okay with what you are doing. And enjoy your new living space. Eitan, legend, man. You're Thank amazing. You. Thank you so Thanks, much. Guys. <laughs>